One of the more bizarre aspects of the Linux experience is a process called distro hopping. For those who don't know, distro hopping is a process whereby a Linux user moves from one distro to another in a short period of time, which is a process that usually involves wiping their entire hard drive and completely reinstalling everything. That includes all of the software that they use, their personal documents, and other things like that. What's most fascinating about this is that distro hopping really is a phenomenon that's unique to the Linux community. You obviously don't see people doing it on Mac OS or Windows, since there's only ever one version at a time, but you don't even really see it in the BSD or other FOSS operating system communities. So, in today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about why people distro hop, why it's a bad idea, and how to get over distro hopping. Right! Now, on the Linux Lounge. So first, let's talk about what exactly makes people distro hop. Well, primarily, it's the sheer amount of choice that exists in Linux that just doesn't exist with other operating systems. Even with operating systems such as BSD, you don't tend to see people distro hopping because there just aren't as many choices on offer. As a result of all the Linux distributions that are on offer, all of which have differences between them that might be as minor as a different theme, or as major as a completely different way of handling packages, people get the idea in their head that they'd fare better with one distro over another. As a result of this, they'll pack up and move to another distro, and keep doing that ad nauseum. Believe it or not, distro hopping is actually quite a damaging thing to do. Think about it. Installing a new distro takes hours of time that could be used on something else, especially when you consider that you have to set everything up as you would like it, which potentially can take hours to do. It also means that you don't use any given distro for long enough to really get acquainted with it and get it set up how you want it, which really does contribute to the sense of dissatisfaction that distro hoppers tend to feel. Now, obviously the reason why people distro hop is because of the sheer paradox of choice that exists with Linux. Effectively, what I mean by that is people tend to have a harder time making choices and tend to be less satisfied with their choices when they're presented with lots of different options, which is why you see a lot less distro hopping in the BSD community as compared to the Linux community. BSD users only really have three or four choices, and all of those choices suit a radically different use case which definitely makes for quite an easy selection, whereas Linux users have thousands of different options available to them, every one of which could potentially be better than the last. When faced with a choice like that, how could anyone be expected to make a good choice? For a real-world example of the paradox of choice, imagine that you enter a restaurant that has a huge menu. Of course, you'd have a hard time choosing what to order, and you'd probably spend a long time mulling over the pros and cons of every single choice on the menu, Whereas if you went into another restaurant that had a small menu printed on a single sheet of paper, you'd probably be able to pretty quickly decide what you want, and you'd also probably be fairly happy with your final choice as well. Linux and BSD are kind of the same way. Linux is the huge menu that's impossible to decide with, whereas BSD is a little simple menu where you'll be satisfied with whatever choice you make. So now that we understand why people distro hop, let's talk about how exactly you're supposed to stop doing it. Well, the obvious unhelpful answer to that question is to just stop installing more distros. Just settle on whatever you have and get on with it. But obviously, that doesn't alleviate the paradox of choice, and therefore doesn't really alleviate distro hopping. In order to do that, you have to really understand that no distro is going to be better than any other. Every distro is going to let you do whatever you want to do, and for the most part, every distro is going to be able to run every program to some extent or another with fairly similar performance, which is really all you need out of a distro. In fact, thanks to innovations such as Flatpak, distros are now more similar to each other than ever before, since pretty much every package can be obtained at any version in a way that's far less distro dependent. There is also a more broad philosophical discussion to be had here as well, which is probably way too deep to discuss here in a Linux video, but I'm going to cover it at a surface level anyway. There's the idea that basically says that the reason why we suffer is because we won, and I think that's quite applicable here. The reason why distro hoppers tend to suffer 
is because they're eternally in a sort of state of one. They want to be more efficient, they want a distro that performs better, and they just generally want to have the best distro possible. What they fail to understand is that none of these things matter particularly, and any distro will work just fine. So with that said, now that we understand that every distro is as good as any other, we have to ask, how exactly do you pick a distro to settle on? Well, it really depends what you're after, but the most important thing to keep in mind is that the main difference between distros is what software they package and how they package it. So if you want a more stable experience, then you should go with something like Debian. If you want to have something more bleeding edge, probably go with something like Arch Linux. If you have no idea what you're doing, maybe try Ubuntu or Linux Mint. Or, if you only want to use free and open source software, maybe try out something like Parabola. But the important thing to realise is that none of these distros are better than any other, and there's nothing that you can do with one that you can't do with another. So don't really worry about switching between them. The only reason why you would ever really want to switch distros is if you find something that you absolutely can't do with one distro, or some problem that you absolutely can't solve with one distro, which is extremely rare. You also might want to consider switching to another distro for ethical reasons, such as wanting to use 100% free software, but even in that case, you can sometimes even convert your existing install. It might also be worth switching distros if you suddenly require more stability, or suddenly require something more bleeding edge, but for the most part, there's never really any reason to switch distribution. Before I finish this video, I would also like to make an appeal to the Linux community. Guys, stop making hundreds of different distros. I know it's cool to make another distro, and I know it feels really useful, but it just adds to this paradox of choice, which is something that hurts existing Linux users and scares off new users. Before you make a new distro, seriously consider if it's necessary. If the only difference between your distro and another is a change of icon theme and desktop environment, then I'm sorry to say that your distro probably isn't necessary, as those are things that the end user could change themselves. In fact, this distro hopping problem is so severe that I've even seen some people go back to Windows because of it. Seriously, think about that. The best thing that you could do if you want to make a new distribution is contribute to an existing distribution, or if you want to make a distribution that just has different themes and stuff, probably just write a guide on how someone can replicate that with an existing distribution. So in conclusion, the best advice I can give is to just stop distro hopping. You're not going to have a better computing experience by doing it, just settle down with one distro and use it for long enough to really get acquainted with it and get it set up the way that you like it. But with that said, that's it for today's video. What did you think of it? Let me know in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed watching it, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.